Hello students, good day. So we meet again for the coverage of your third examination. So we are now on the week six to seven. Okay, I'll share the screen to you. My uh, SIM or your self-instructional manual. So as your facilitator, I am expecting you to give more value to our environment and to show your concerns about our very own planet Earth. By now, I am confident that you already wanted to become a professional in the next future in your chosen career path someday. And uh, with this job that you want in the future, so in this... Um, current situation that we are facing today, the COVID-19, and also the environmental issue, which is the climate change. So I hope you are more educated and responsible as a Filipino citizen. So I wish that you will enjoy the rest of the topics to be discussed related to this course. So enjoy the learning process. So the word environmental conservation is a very important for us to be able to survive. We will know what are the environmental conservation in forests, grasslands, natural parks, and natural preserves, how important are food in agriculture, so you're expected gain, to gain new knowledge and perform the different tasks. So for the week 6 to 7, so the unit learning outcomes are the following. So at the end of the unit, you're expected to Identify the environmental conservation in the forests, the grasslands, natural parks, and the natural preserves. And I will explain to you what are or how is the importance of this food and agriculture. Okay, let's discuss first no, the first ulo. So the most abundant type of um uh, sorry. So together with the woods, forests. Uh, green pastures and rangelands occupy approximately 60% of the global land cover. <clears throat> Sorry. Such habitats provide many of our critical resources for animals such as timber, paper pulp, and grazing. They also provide essential ecological services including the regulating climate, the controlling water runoff, providing the wildlife habitat purifying air and water and supporting rainfall and there are also scenic economic and historical qualities in the forest and grasslands that deserve the protection yet they are still among the habitats that is most disturbed okay the most abundant types of the forest are the boreal are the boreal and the tropical rainforest so you already know this type of forest from the um, types of or the different types of the major biomes from the previous chapter and those forests are widely disturbed but most of the remaining forests are in the cold boreal or the taiga regions as we all know taiga is a biome that uh, more on the environment is in the cold region and the tropics of the humidity. So assessing the distribution of the forest is tricky since the forests vary in the density and their height, and many are inaccessible. So the United Nations FAO, or the Food and Agricultural Organization, um, sorry for this, Madav, advertisement, describes the forest as any region in which the trees cover more than 10% of the land. So this definition includes the forests ranging from open savannas whose trees occupy less than 20% of the area to a closed canopy forest where the tree crowns cover most of the land. And then the largest tropical forest is in the basin of the Amazon River in the Brazil. So diba, um, we uh, heard from the news there is a certain wildfire in the Amazon forest uh, in which the Amazon forest uh, give um, a lot of oxygen in the entire planet because of their tropical, uh, largest tropical forest that can be located in the Amazon. That is why the native or the indigenous people in the Am uh, living in the Amazon are very angry to the Brazilian government because they are more um, 
having this progressive type of environment uh, there are more buildings some um, factories industries and they are not thinking about the um the environment uh yeah they cut down trees so that is why uh this amazon uh forest is ha has a great impact in the um fight against the climate change so the highest forest loss rates are also in the South America, just like the country Brazil can be located in the South America. Some of the most biologically diverse regions in the world suffer a rapid deforestation, including here in the Southeast Asia and also in the Central America. He would play more of a part in a modern economic activity than any other commodity. So as we all know, there's a lot of uses of these woods uh, such as the furnitures it may be used as um, for food like for example cooking your food in the forest uh, these woods uh, would uh, be a result of having these fires right or it could also be uh, could be used as build building or any shelters at your home like that there is hardly any industry that does not use wood or wood products somewhere in its manufacturing and the marketing phase. So there are some, uh, yes, use, use this wood because of its hard, uh, the durability of its material or its texture. So consider about about the amount of mail, the newspapers, for the copies, packaging, and other paper items, diba? So those paper paper material those hard copies are made from trace diba so yun siya that in each handlessly store and dispose of in a single day in a developing country so that is why um in our in our country in the philippines so we are more on using the recyclable material so that uh, walang masasayang na mga gamit so yun siya so again according to the FAO the grass annual world wood is about a use is about 5.5 billion cubic uh, meter so diba marami siyang ginagamit using this wood that is more than just combined steel and the plastics use kesa sa usage of the plastics kasi nga yung plastic is matagal pa siya madidecompose because it's non biodegradable unlike the wood um uh, decompose siya because it is it ha, it is in it is an organic material so a year foreign trade in the wood and the wood products amounts over 200 billion dollars okay the tropical forests are amongst in the earth's richest and the most diverse systems although they now occupy less than 10 percent of the earth's surface it is thought that this forest contain more than two-thirds of all higher plant biomass so that is the usage of this tropical rainforest so siya yung pinaka-rich na and pinaka-diverse that is living or the plant that is used in this planet earth okay we have here an asian country in the indonesia that is now believed to have the world's highest deforestation rate or forest loss so if you have heard some news in the previous month that indonesia suffer from this natural destruction or natural disaster which is floodings diba uh, bumabaha sa kanilang uh, bansa kasi nga because they have this highest rate rate of the deforestation at this 84 percent of the total land of the indonesia was forested and the world lost at least 24 million hectares of forest or 59 million acres between 1990 and 2010. So, di ba, ang laki ng kanilang land area na nawala because of this cutting down the trees. And most of it are illegal palm oil plantations. So, yung mga walang business permit or this uh, plant oil, uh, palm oil plantations na very illegal na uh, sila is more on having this practicality or a rich um, high class or mas una pa nila sa dinila na uh, mag 
baka uh, tawag nito uh, magpaka-reach or yeah, kaysa sa naman sa environment na isa din siya na uh, makakasira sa ating um, planet. In the year 20, despite pledge to reduce their forest clearing in 2014, so Indonesia continues to loss and decimated 80% hectares per annum rivaling the Brazil's deforestation. So mas malaki talaga ang nawala sa bansang Indonesia on this um, deforestation na encounter nila. So Brazil was reported to have lost 28,000 kilometers squared of forest to clearing and this forest fires in the 2004. And the rate of the deforestation has declined in a few years, but it has recently rise in reaching 16,000 kilometers squared in 2017. Throughout in the continent of Africa, like the Senegal, the Sierra Leone, Ghana, Madagascar, Cameroon, and Liberia, coastal forests have already been completely destroyed. So Haiti was once forested by 80%, while today it has largely destroyed all the forest and the land is barren and eroded. While in the Asia, like the India, Myanmar, Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand are all left with a small old prone lowland forest. Nearly two-thirds of the original moist tropical forest has been destroyed in the Central America mostly over the past 30 years, mainly because of this illegal logging and converting forests into a cattle farm. So yun siya. There's a lot of countries who are engaging in this um, deforestation or the problems with the forest. In which uh, biodiversity is very important in this forest. So uh, from the documentary in the Netflix, uh, if you've watched the forest, uh, it is very diverse um, organisms having the plants and the animals. So if you watch the documentary film in the forest, so you can see that it is very a, an amazing um, view or like you are from a different planet living in this uh, wonderful natures in the um, ecosystem. Okay, shifting the cultivation sometimes called the slash and burn or the milpa cultivation is often blamed for the destruction of the forest. But some indigenous people in many countries have found the sustainable ways of using the dynamic cycles of the mixed polyculture and the soil alteration practices to increase the soil fertility. In many areas, these practices have been destabilized by growing in non-indigenous populations and the logging. And then forests provide important regulations regarding the regional climate. So in Shadiba, this trees, this forest has a big impact to fight against the climate change because uh, the process of photosynthesis, they just need the soil, the water, the energy from the sunlight, and then the carbon dioxide that they are taking in. And then they also gives off oxygen to us humans. And then yung roots nila is sila din yung nag prevent sa mga calamities such as mga floods, mga earthquakes, or mga landslides. So yun siya. Okay, that in, uh, we have here uh, much of the rain which falls in the area around the Amazon rainforest comes directly from the transpiration. It also been shown that the Amazon forest generate rain two, two to three months before the winds carry moisture from the ocean. So we have here a figure in the figure 12. So it is a adapted from the book Cunning Hound 2020. In descending of vegetation, the large trees of the old growth temperate forest produce more total biomass per unit area than any other ecosystem. So you have here an example of a tropical forest. And then it may be also uh, a good in impact on this, what is happening. So it is a large clear cut such as this that threaten the species dependent and the old growth um, forest. So with this 
land area. So if there are um, living below on this side, so it may result to landslides. Kasi nga, di ba, if mag-soften na yung soil, so that is the time na pupunta rin na naman siya sa ibaba. So wala ng trees na mag prevent sa mga natural calamities. And also we have here some um, by suppressing the fires and allowing fuel to accumulate, we are making large fires like this more likely. So, minsan, this forest fires is a result of this climate change, di ba? Because sa sobrang init na ng panahon, so what would happen is that masusunog yung mga trees. So, just like in this picture. Okay, that act. Uh, through the 1990, several federal agencies begin, began changing their strategies from a purely economic orientation to the environmental management, which is somewhat sim similar to the Northwest Forest Plan and its cohesive structures approach. And some of its principles include the controlling of the ecological timescales across the whole landscapes, watersheds or regions, Relying on the scientifically based, ecologically sound decision-making data, addressing the human needs, and promoting sustainable economic development and communities, maintaining the biological diversity and the vital ecosystem processes, using institutional cooperation arrangements, generate an active stakeholders and the public engagement, and promote a collaborative decision-making and change management over time that is based on the experimentation and the regular monitoring. So there are now certain agencies that working on to fight against this um, our fo main forest because as we all know we are now having this environmental issues, the climate change uh, as what our president Rodrigo Roa Duterte said that uh, this COVID-19 pandemic would not kill the entire human nation, but also this climate change, diba? because of uh, what was happening in our um, environment, some natural destructions that we are facing today, the floods, earthquakes, um, landslides, volcanic eruption, forest fires, and so on. Okay, that's the first environmental conservation, which is the forest. Next is the grasslands. Grasslands are among the biomes that accompany for the forest often used by the humans. Approximately one quarter of the world's land surface covers the prairies, savannas, cities, open forests, and other grasslands. Okay, most of the Great Plains that is located in the United States of America and Canada, the prairies provinces fall under this group. To within this biome, a total of 3. billion hectares and pasture land cover almost twice the area of all the agricultural crops. You will hear an example of the Northern Great Plains in Montana, USA. That is too dry for trees, but supports a variety of biological communities. So there are some animals that would love to eat these grasses. Diba? So there are also some insects living in the grasslands. Okay, but carefully monitoring the number of the cattle ranchers, so we have here pastoralists, the, in which they are the people who survive by herding the livestock and the state of the area. So they can adjust to various in the rainfall, seasonal plant conditions, and the forage nutritional qualities to maintain the healthy livestock and avoid the overuse of any given area. Uh, so those people living in the uh, rural area or the provinces, so they, they are the farmers, right? So they love or they know or they have the knowledge to really how these grasses or these grasslands would be um, used or uses or uh, those uh, grasses uh, could be eaten by some of their um, uh, Animals from the farms, uh, like the cow, the caribou, or goat, so like that. The lack of the implementation of the existing regulation and insufficient 
resources for the improving the range resulting the overgrazing or the damage to the vegetation and soil, including the loss of the native forage species and the erosion. So in some, uh, no, in the most public grazing lands in the U.S., not in the good health. So in case in many countries, so the political and economic pressures encourage managers to increase breeding lots beyond the range of the carrying capacities because um, these farms, are though the farmers is, has a great impact in the economy, right? And this agriculture. So ano, ano na yung kakainin natin na mga rice if wala sila? Or yung mga meat sa mga palengke? So yun siya. Although most forests and the grasslands serve useful for the practical purposes, for the aesthetic or the recreational reasons, and most communities have set aside other natural areas. So, di ba, minsan sa atin may mga adventurous or adventure na mga pagkatao. So, just like me, I also love being with the nature, uh, mountain climbing, di ba, yung mga going outdoors. But on some uh, areas, so mga natives or mga tao na naninirahan doon is may mga um, conservation and preservation din silang nalalaman na dapat tayo na mga tao is we are more responsible and educated when it comes to uh, going or experiencing this kind of environment. Okay, we have here another conservation. We have what we call as the natural bar. So we are done with the forest, grassland. So the third one is the natural Parts. So they have existed for the centuries. For the religious purpose, so the ancient Greeks protected this as their sacred grove. So in the Greek, so yung mga ancient Greek uh, people, so yung natural parks is parang sagrado sa kanila. For the centuries also in the royal um, hunting grounds in the Europe have preserved the forest. Well, these areas were typically reserved for the societies, the privileged groups, and they preserve the, the biodiversity and the natural ecosystem in regions where most lands are heavily used. The various degrees of the protection are used in the nature conservation. So we have here the World Conservation Union or the WCU that is classified protected areas into five groups according to the projected um, degree of the human allowed use. So the strictest category or the ecological reserves and protective zones allows for few humans to interfere. So ito siya diba that um, we should be more responsible as humans kasi um, isa lang din itong planet natin which is the earth or in own, only one environment so, unlike in any lower form of animals like mga dogs, cats, or um, any other lower form mammals, um, they are not having the destruction of the environment. So, kita mismo na may pag-iisip ang sumisira sa ating um, planeta. Kasi nga, Yung mga irresponsable na mga tao, they're just throwing uh, those garbages anywhere. Yung mga plastic, uh, the usage of these plastics na uh, minsan nga is napupunta sa mga karagatan and then what will happen to the animals? So yung mga nagpo-float na mga plastics na nasa ibabaw ng tubig is akal nila na food yun and then kakainin nila yun and then what would happen sa mga animals? So it would not digest it on their stomach, so mamatay sila in the next future. Here we have here another country in the Venezuela that claims to have the highest proportion of any countries in the world, so a total of 66% protected by its land area. About half of the land is designated as a preserve for the indigenous peoples or the sustainable um, harvesting. So yun siya that this indigenous people has also a vision or has a role in protecting this um, forest and then the um, grasslands or this any other environmental um, conservation because uh, yun nga, nakikita nila ito as one of their um, 
very vital or significant um, function sa kanilang daily living kasi nga sila, they are just living in the rural area. So, uh, di na nila kailangan pumunta sa mga city or sa mga lungsod para magkapera or para may makakain because uh, they are just having this uh, green or this um, gardening, di ba? Green project or na um, with agriculture or farming na nagtatanim lang sila ng mga gulay or putas sa kanilang bakuran and then tutubo na siya and then medin, may makakain na sila and then minsan is binibenta nila so magkakapera pa din sila. So yun siya. Another South American countries is as what I have mentioned a while ago, the Brazil includes the large protected areas approximately 2 billion kilometers or 25% of the nation's land is covered that is mainly in the Amazon, peace, and in the Brazil. So in 2006, the northern Brazilian state of the Para and partnership with the conservation of the um, international or the CI and other NGOs declared of the protected areas along the border with the Suriname and then the Guiana. Okay, we have here an example of a natural park. So, Kittiner Park that is located in the Australia. So, I know Canada, I'm sorry. So, the, at the north end of the Ellesmere Island, the Canada's Kittiner Park National Park has a plenty of isolation and a beautiful scenery, but little diversity. Kasi nga, in Canada, it has a colder region, so konti lang yung makakasurvive ng mga plants and animals, but it has a very good uh, view or scenery. Oh, may dalawa nga mountainers na gusto pumunta dito uh, para also experience the beautiful creation of God on this nature. Another example is from the Greece. So we have here the Pindus National Park is characterized by the dense European black pine and a common beach forest. Rocky ridges, several peaks of more than 2,000 meters or 6,600 feet, rapid streams, and a mountain lake. So, ito siya. So, may, uh, they have a rapid streams or this body of water. And then, my lakes din sila dito na makikita. And then, the UNESCO or the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organizations named this uh, or has been listed as one of the World Heritage Centers, our very own Puerto Princesa Subterranean River Natural National Park features one of the most impressive cave systems in the world, featuring a stunning calcareous cal cal landscapes, untouched natural beauty, preserved forests, and the rare wildlife. So ito siya is makita sa ating very own country or beautiful country, the Philippines. Having this 7,107 islands. Okay, we have here the World Conservation Strategy um, established by the IUCN. Okay, uh, they have three objectives. So number one is preserving a critical ecological processes and life support system, such as the soil regeneration and the protection. So they preserve the critical um, ecological processes, so those critically endangered species, plants, and animals. So they have this uh, new uh, so uh, this soil regeneration or making of this new artificial soils or land in order for the plant and animal species to uh, recover or to survive and also to protect them and recycle these nutrients and purification of the water on which the human survival also and the growth would depend. Okay, the second objective is to maintain the genetic diversity which is necessary for the breeding programs to develop the crops and domesticated animals. So in order to preserve a certain species, so there should be uh, what we call as the genetic diversity, so the survival of those critically endangered plants and animals. 
and last objective is ensure ensuring the any use of the wildlife and habitats that is sustainable so there should be a very useful uh, wildlife and the ha habitats in a sustainable development goal so yun hindi ba um some of the reason of this covid-19 pandemic are eating those wild animals like the bats the pangolin um that would also the result of the human um um irresponsibility in which uh yun nga we should dapat in a hunt or in a harvest ng mga wild animals kasi nakatira sila sa kanilang wild habitats so yung mga tao is yun nga they are very curious or they want to try something new so ano nangyari ngayon so we experience this covid-19 pandemic Okay, we biologists promote the protected areas that can shelter the marine animals from the destructive fishing activities as stock of the ocean fish are increasingly declining globally. So as a BS biology graduate, so I also promote everybody to uh, preserve or to protect our land areas or our bodies of water. Because I have learned in my four degree course uh now i am teaching in a university so i really want to preserve on this um environment because of what we are going to be uh, facing or what are going to be doing this kind of activity or human activity that we are um um doing in which uh, it may destruct our own planet so as a biologist, so I really want to protect our own planet and save those animals, any kinds of animals, insects, or invertebrate animals, or vertebrate animals, because they are very good or a beautiful creation by God. So we should really need to protect them or save them. Because uh, minsan is looking at them is it releases or it distress or remove all my stress in life, uh, being with nature, the ba in the mountain, in the seas, uh, hearing those uh, beautiful sounds, a bird chirping, the waves of the uh, the sound waves in the ocean, it is very relaxing. So as individual or as a human. So we should be responsible on what are going to be doing just like it, what was happening in the in this um um situation that we're facing today so we are just staying now in indoors or staying at home so I miss going outdoors because uh I miss uh to be with nature but with this pandemic so it may also give us an idea to give time also to the nature just to be themselves to heal the kasi means yung mga tao is uh when we go to any other natures is sinisira natin sila or they disturb siya can we have here some species conservation efforts in the philippines that have concentrated mainly on the wildlife so the Philippine eagle, so as you all know from the previous chapter or previous lesson, is one of the critically endangered species. So it is our national bird, the Fitocophaga jeffrey. And another conservation efforts are the Philippine tamarau or the Bubalus mendorensis. So this uh, um, locally um, tamarau or animal that is found in the Mindoro it's from the, its scientific name. So the Philippine cockatoo, the cockatoo, Hemagatorophygia. Lastly, the Philippine tarsier or the Tarsius syracta, and among others, and so on. Okay, another is in the marine biodiversity hotspot worldwide. So our country is recognized as one of the merry a marine biodiverse um, environment. So the marine protected area survey can be used 
as a way to develop a systematic approach to this biodiversity monitoring. So the Department of Science and Technology, as well as the Department of the Environmental and Natural Resources, are conducting some research if our um, area is very good indicator of a healthy environment. Kasi nga, if marami siyang um, different species na mga plants and animals, marine or in the terrestrial, that means it is, an health, it is a healthy environment. And then, uh, coordination with the local government, so that is also a significant biodiversity awareness, strategies of the local government units or DLGU. Okay, we have here... Uh, people in the developing countries are beginning to realize that their most valuable assets may be their biological resources and that their protection is vital to the sustainable development. So we have here what we call as the ecotourism. That is an ecologically and socially sustainable tourism that can be a, of a greater long-term value in many ways than extractive industries such as the logging and the mining. So it is an ecologically and socially sustainable tourism, which is the ecotourism, so ecosystem or the ecology, the study of the um, species living in the ecosystem. So we have here an example, the coral reefs, in which they are perhaps the world's most complex habitats. So that contains tens of the thousands of the marine animals one third of all the marine fish live on the coral reefs for part of their lives in the Philippines, and it depends on the marine life. So the reefs of the Il Nido contain at least five species of these sea turtles, and then 1,600 species of fish, and some 1,700 species of the mollusks and the sponges. So that is how biodiverse the El Nido Palawan because the government and the area has this biological or biodiversity awareness in order to preserve their natural habitat. Okay, that's a wrap for our for environmental conservation, the forests, the grasslands, the natural parks, and the natural preserves. Okay, let's proceed now to the last topic for the coverage of your third examination, the food and agriculture. So the food is a substance that basically consists of protein, carbohydrates, fats, or the lipids, and other nutrients that is used in any body to support the growth and the survival or the vital process and to provide us energy. Well, the agriculture is the method by which the food feed, fiber, and many other desirable products are produced by the growing certain plants and raising domestic animals or the livestock. Okay, recent improvements have increased the demand significantly, providing the expensive meat worldwide even in the developing countries. So the food production has so drastically increased that we are now using maize the soybeans, and the sugar to drive our vehicles. So the 2005 global food costs in inflation adjusted to dollars were the lowest ever supported less than a quarter of the cost in the mid-1970s, according to the International Monetary Fund. So as we all know, uh, we are overpopulated um, individuals, so the more population of humans, so the more consumption of this food. So that is why uh, instead of rice, so we also use this maize, the soybean, and the sugar cane to drive um, our food security. While 50 years ago, so hunger was one of the world's most important and recurring um, concerns, diba? So sa una pa is may famine na or kagutuman na nangyayari. Kasi nga, uh, marami na din mga population from the past na mas dumodoble na din ngayon. Okay, we have here, uh, let's run through na lang on the um, examples of this 
food. Yeah, like for example, in this, children await at a feeding station in the Somalia. So a country in the Africa for their daily ration. So yung ration nila of the porridge. When starvation of war forces people out of their homes, the social structures crumble. Also, the diseases spreads rapidly and the situation quickly becomes urgent. So it is an example of these famines or the food, food shortage on a large scale with a, several, a severe drought and the social chaos. So kasi nga, yun siya, they don't have a lot of resources or natural resources na uh, tatanin manila for their food kasi nga, they are overpopulated um, countries or overpopulated human beings. Okay, also we have here um, a proper diet is also a key to a keeping you safe. So you need to food balance to provide the right nutrients as well as the ample of calories for the healthy and the balanced lifestyle. So the Food and Agriculture or the FAO of the United Nations estimates that nearly 3 billion suffer from this deficiency in the vitamins, minerals, or the proteins. So we have here had the entire deficiencies that lead to a severe illness. So First is this kwasher core that is a form of a severe protein malnutrition with edema and a fatty infiltration of the swollen liver. So that is why lalaki yung chan nila. Kasi lumobo na din or nagswell yung liver nila or lang kanilang atay. And then another deficiency is the marasmus that suffers from the shortage in the proteins and the calories which gives a wizened look or which dry and a flaky skin. So, ito na yung example ng marasmus. So, a dietary deficiencies that is common in the developing countries or because of this poverty, uh, the loss of jobs, di ba? Like, for example, in the African nation. Okay, we have here a confined animal feeding pro of operation, rather, or the CAFU where animals are kept and fed for the rapid growth, mainly from soy and the corn. So such operations could dominate livestock raising in the United States, the Europe, and China, and other countries increasingly. These animals are kept in large enclosures in a massive barn complex of up to 10,000 hogs or, or a million chickens or 100,000 cattle in a feed lot. So, marami na ding uh, nareproduce ng mga livestock kasi nga tayo-tao is dumadami na din. So, dapat marami ding mga chicken na kainin natin or mga pig or hogs and then cattle or mga baka. Moreover, in the Philippines, those can find a fun in meat lovers make money from this meat business. So, as you are familiar with mga sanggyupsal, di ba, in the Korean a drama, K-drama, or Korean movies, mga sangyup, K-war fun, or uh, isa na din siya karoon sa mga food businesses na muusbong in our economy or our country. In which, uh, here, an example of this fresh longganisa, a chicken, and beef, and pork, and the Commonwealth's local wet market. So the BAI, or the BAI, so they have a data that the Bureau of Animal Industry showed that a total meat imports reached a record of a high of 850 metric tons in 2018, which has more than double in the 390,000 metric tons reported in the 2010. So from 390, so 850 na yung metric tons. So ang laki-laki ng imports natin with these livestock, di ba? So the stakeholders in the industry expect meat imports to stay flat in the 2019 kasi nga, dumadami natin ang ating race or ating nation. Okay, so that is why agriculture is very important in our economy. So living in these livestock, uh, the farmers, so yun siya. And also, the excessive contributes not only to waste water, but also the water lagging 
So we have here salinization in which the mineral salts accumulate in the soil. That is often a problem when irrigation and then the water dissolves on the surface of which is lethal to most plants behind a salty crust. So ito naman yung nangyayari naman sa ating land uh, farmers na marami din silang mga uh, na-experience ng mga problema sa kanilang farm. Uh, lalo na sa mga natural calamities if this uh, this season is La Nina so uh, para uh, palagi na lang umuulan so mamamatay din yung mga rice fields na tinatanim nila or those if minsan naman is El Nino is uh, di makaka-survive yung mga rice fields so yun siya okay we have here the biodiversity international has released the module the law and policy of the relevance of the management of the plant uh, genetic resources. So, this in genetic engineering is the splicing of gene from one organism into a chromosome of another that has the potential to greatly increase both the quantity and quality of our food supply. So, this we have here an example of the genetically modified organisms or a living modified organisms. So, this is a BT corn or the Bacillus thuringiensis in the Philippines that was designed to be resistant to the Asiatic corn borer. So the benefit of this gene is that it originated from a soil bacteria in which what would happen in this corn, so yung mga bak uh, gene ng isang bacteria na inintroduce in sa maize or this corn is yung mga peste or yung mga pest, mga caterpillar or mga worms na gustong kumain sa corn is mamamatay kasi uh, maiisip nila or malalasahan nila na parang iba yung lasa kasi nga because of these BT genes. Uh, it may also provide a natural insecticide to further protect this crop. So, pwede na siya walang kailangan mga pesticides or mga chemical insecticides. So these GM crops have allowed expansion to the agriculture into the formerly and farm. So the Brazil's rainforest and the Cerrado region. But some problems are these ver new varieties are very expensive kasi nga kailangan pa siya ng experimentation na genetic engineering. So may uh, mahal siya na material na gagamitin or laboratory yung mga gene splicing. It may also forcing the poor farmers into debt. So, wala nang uh, farmers na magtatrabaho to plant these crops kasi nga may mga group of uh, genetic scientists na uh, mag-inject uh, sa mga corn or sa mga rice. And then some herbicides in drinking water have a known health um, effect. So it is one of the ecologically sustainable solution for poor corn farmers everywhere, everywhere to increase their yield. So para may good result or may magandang bunga like this corn, so marami ding mga tao ang makikinabang or makikikain if may healthy siya na corn. But it's up to the body system sa tao nakakain nito. May iba na may allergy if kakain sila nito. So... Uh, it depends on the body systems, but on some poor countries, so parang immune na sila to really have this food para may kakainin din sila. Okay, that's a wrap for our discussion for the food and agriculture. Okay, thank you guys for listening and have a good day. So, bye-bye!